This is an incident that happened to me when I was in middle school. One day, I decided to play hide and seek in a slightly different way with my friend, Eric. It was a hide and seek while summoning souls. I know, we were just stupid teenagers. However, the more important fact is that this did not end with some simply goofy game, yet in horror. We found a way to play the game on the internet and cast the spell to summon souls as written. Then, I hid inside the closet while Eric hid under the bed. How much time has passed? Suddenly, I heard Eric screaming. Hiding inside the closet, I looked through the crack of the open doors. That terrifying sight. Eric bounced out of the bed as if he had been pulled out. He swung his arms as if he was fighting and shouted at me. Max, help me! But there was nothing on the side he was staring at. There was just a wall. I was dumbfounded, having no clue what just happened. Then, after a moment, Eric screamed hysterically and grabbed his neck. Soon after, his limbs spread uncontrollably as if someone was pulling them. Eric screamed frantically. I started trembling so bad at the shocking sight. A few moments later, he rolled over like crazy until he crashed into the wall and passed out. Then it became quiet. Thinking this had gone wrong big time, I urgently called the ambulance and carried Eric out of the house. As I was leaving the house, I heard a voice from behind. It was the voices of dozens of children laughing and saying, Now you're it. I got so many goosebumps and my legs got loosened, so I fell and dropped Eric to the floor. After barely dragging Eric outside, an ambulance arrived a while later. Eric was frothing at his mouth. Eric's parents rushed to the hospital and tried to blame me but the doctor made it clear that I did not make him like that. He said Eric's ligaments in his limbs were severely torn, which is definitely not something a middle schooler could do. A few moments later, Eric woke up and said some invisible kids grabbed his arms and legs and pulled at them hysterically. However, no one believed his words, and I haven't seen Eric since that day. He moved out soon afterwards and I still don't know how he was doing. The guilt for not being able to protect Eric at that time still remains inside me. If I had gone out of the closet and saved him, would he still be injured? However, I was too terrified. Even though I didn't know what they were, I knew they weren't something I could confront. Since that day, I haven't played hide and seek. However, even today, it feels like I am with someone even though I am home alone. One time, early in the morning, I heard a voice underneath my bed. Look for me. I thought it was a hallucination and stayed up all night trembling so bad. Next time, I heard the voice coming from the closet. After that, I heard the voices of children under the sheets, the cupboard, the bathtub, and many more places. Look for me. So, I started carrying a crucifix at all times. Of course, I have never responded to the voices. I ignored them completely because I instinctively knew that something horrifying would happen if I opened up where the voices came from. Luckily, I am doing well now. However, I do not think this is over yet because even when I move to different places, they keep following me. So, I want to warn you, never, never cast a spell that summons souls. Because although there is a spell to summon souls, there isn't one to send them back.